Okay, buckle in, we're getting into her. Hi friends, if you do not know who I am, my name is Paige Leal, hi, nice to meet you. I'm autistic and over here we talk about autism and stuff. The stuff today being sex. I think that sexual education should be something that happens throughout the lifetime, but I do think that it needs to be tailored to the individual child and also progress throughout that child's lifetime to become more specific and more tailored to them and their development and where they are at that development. So, but with that being said, I am going to be talking about actual like sexual intimacy. I'm not gonna be like talking sexually. It is kind of gonna be more like just like my opinion stuff. I kind of wanted to say that this is for 18 plus, but I'm like, I'm, it's not porn. Like I'm talking about stuff that I learned when I was in public school. Um, so I guess like, you know, just be smart. I really wanted to talk about my relationship with sex and like having sex now as an autistic person and some of the struggles that I have and some of the ways that, you know, things make it easier. But I realized that my relationship with my sexual health has been very complex and is still under development. And so I can't really talk about it without giving kind of a backstory. Because I think that the way that I grew up, the way that I learned about sex really impacted how I ended up having sex and also being autistic and the way that I was taught about relationships really impacted my relationship with sex as well. So we're starting back when I was like two or three, I knew what sex was. I didn't know what was going on, you know, but I knew that sex was something special, something secretive, something that kids weren't supposed to know about, that only adults did behind closed doors, and it was very, very hush-hush. One time my mom spelled S-E-X thinking I didn't know what it spelled. I'm like, I know that that spells sex, like I know. Unfortunately, growing up, I heard or saw or walked in on my parents having sex a lot, but they never explained it. They never talked to me about it. They never told me what was going on, but I re it really bothered me. I was frustrated because I knew that kids weren't supposed to know about this or hear it or see it, and they were not being very careful or considerate or respectful, and that made me really angry as a kid too, especially when my little brother came along and then my little brother had to like hear it. I felt pretty um, emotionally neglected by my parents as a kid, and so I really found that um, I thought that when they were having sex and stuff I found it really selfish honestly and I get frustrated with them and mad at them because they never wanted to hang out with me they were always busy or they never had the time but it could be the middle of the night and they'd make time to do this thing together and I'm like oh it just makes me so mad because it feels selfish to me that you do this but you don't want to hang out with me you don't make any time for me anyway had to keep it very hush hush one time I told a teacher about it at school and she called my mom and my mom said don't talk to people about it and I said no I can do what I want if it's the truth maybe you should stop having sex in front of me if you have a problem but I had zero sex talk from my parents at all growing up which was super fun when I started to hit puberty the only thing that I knew about sex and about puberty was from whatever they teach you in the public education which is what literally the anatomy of your body parts no lad just needs to know the vas deferens. Like is this surgery school or am I a 12 year old kid? I knew nothing about sex or how it worked or how sexual arousal worked or anything about masturbation. And around like 11, 12 was when, you know, started masturbating. Didn't know I was masturbating. Didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was that it would feel good and then it would build up to feeling really, really, really good but I couldn't do it anymore after that or else it would hurt and so there was a stopping point. I felt so much shame and guilt for years after I started masturbating. I did it in private in my room because apparently, you know, I was like three and touched myself in public and my mom said, do not do that to go to your room. And so I knew that at least I had to go to my room. I was filled with so much shame and so much guilt that I wanted to end my life when I was 11. Like I wrote a suicide note about what I was doing and how much of a bad person I felt like I was and I showed it to my mom one day and my mom was like um okay this is a lot you're overreacting you learn nothing about any of that shit in sex ed you learn nothing about pleasure like literally all you learn is anatomy every STI known to fucking man so they can terrify the shit out of you and then also all of the ways that you can prevent pregnancy because they also want to terrify the shit out of you I was like how does the stuff come out of the penis like is it just when it's touched it just comes out or like, is there, is there a start stop? Like, how does it, how does it stop? When does it start? How does it go in? 
how does it work? What position does it go? Like, what are the biomechanics of it? How does, like, do you move? Is it supposed to, like, how do you, what is it, what's the, what's the do, how do you do it? Can we talk about a woman's pleasure? Because I can't even see myself in this black and white diagram from the 30s. Like, that doesn't even look like my vagina. And can we talk about, like, having a safe partner and safe sex? Not just, like, wear a condom and don't get pregnant, but safe as in, like, this is a good situation and you want to do this and you both have consent to do this and you are ready and you want to do this and this is a good person. Like, how do I know that someone is not taking advantage of me? How do I know when I want to have sex? How do I advocate for myself if I don't want to have sex and someone does? What about having a relationship with your body and understanding your body and knowing your body boundaries? We need to be educated on porn or else porn becomes education. Because if you don't teach all the shit about sex, kids need to learn about sex. Everyone needs to learn about sex if they have a human body. Because I knew nothing. So I learned from good old porn, which what do little girls learn from porn? They learn, well, that you're ugly, <laughs> that you are an object to be constantly desired. You are being perceived, you're being judged. You need to look and act and be away. I was like, all right, Roger that. I see as a little autistic kid. I'm like, I'm gonna mask the shit out of that. So then I'm 15. I get my first boyfriend. We're together for like six months. When we finally decided to do it, we had known each other forever and it was both of our first times. So it was like a really big deal. I was with him for a year after, you know, we became sexually active. And during that year, <laughs> okay, I'm not just gonna single him out here. It was a lot of years after I became sexually active that sex was never fun for me. I never wanted to have sex when my partner did. I'm gonna talk about specifically having sex with men because this, all this problem was when I had sex with men. Having sex with women was like completely different because I didn't know I was gay and it was all like Wah. So I really feel this way with men specifically. And at this point I was primarily with men. So I was constantly aware that I was being perceived and also very, very aware that men thought I was hot and that boys actually, it was, it was boys mostly. Very aware that they're judging me, that they are perceiving me. I never had an orgasm. And actually, um, okay, we're gonna trigger warning right here for sexual assault, okay? Because this is one of the things that we really gotta talk about, especially when it comes to autistic girls and their sexual health. I didn't consent to a lot, to most things. It would just kind of start happening and I'm like, oh, how the fuck did I get myself in this situation? I guess I must have done something to deserve this. I must have signaled in some kind of way that this was okay. I must have, I don't know. I'm, I don't know a lot of things about people, so it must have happened. And I would dissociate. And it was when I was, was coming back, I'm like, what the f I just dissociated whilst having sex? Like I'm still currently having sex, but I was gone for I don't know how long, I don't know where. Why did that happen? I was really young and naive and I put myself in a lot of dangerous situations with people that I thought that I trusted that I shouldn't have trusted. It wasn't until I broke up with like my long-term boyfriend of like two and a half years that I'm like, most of the times that I've had sex in my life have been actually without my consent and without my enjoyment or participation. I thought I was a lesbian for a bit cause I'm like, it's never happened with men before. Like I've, I've enjoyed myself with women, but I do like men, I realize now, I actually do. It's just I really didn't like my ex-boyfriend. And now knowing about PDA autism too, I really don't like the way that I think men specifically get to look at me, you know? I have PDA problems when I think a man is like sexually aroused by me or attracted by me, when I'm not trying to get that, when I'm just existing as a person like, and then you get sexually attracted to me. I'm like, okay, that's your fucking deal, not mine. Like, don't come over here and try to like make me sexually aroused because you are. Like when I was younger, I would just like literally dissociate and just become a zombie, I guess, and just let things happen. But now thankfully, since being like about 21, I've really taken a look at my sexual health and prioritized it and prioritized my own consent when I am ready and willing to have sex. This is actually turns out gonna be a part two. This is all my past. I'll see you in the next bit for all my current sexual stuff. <laughs> this is the end of the video song. This video is to tell you the video's done. 
If you're hearing this, it's because the video's done. Go watch another one. Boop, boop. Have a good day and love you so much. Bye.